Praise the Lord, how's everybody doing today? day today. It's Friday, y'all. I got my baby with me today. <laughs> Just pray them for a few seconds. Australia. We're going to run on and see what the end is going to be. Tequila Robinson in here today. Hey, honey. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Praise God. We just thank and praise God for being here today on this Friday, this wonderful Friday. And as I stated, I have my daughter with me, my oldest daughter, Sister Hannah. Praise the Lord. And um, we're still going forth with the great falling away. If you uh, saw our caption today, we're talking about the great falling away continued. Because as we know, there is a great falling away in this hour. And... I have Hannah with me today. God dealt with Hannah and showed her some things in a dream and uh, eventually give, gave her the interpretation that um, we know that is uh, necessary to come to the body of Christ. So we're going to thank God today, uh, first of all, for being here today. God, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord God, to come before your people, Lord God, we thank you for our, our YouTube channel, Reconciling Souls Back to Christ. God, we just give you the praise today. We thank you for everybody that will be under the sound of our voice today, Lord God. We pray that you touch Hannah and strengthen her in the mighty name of Jesus, God, to give to your people what you've given to her. In Jesus' name, I pray. And praise the Lord again. And so I want to say, too, that... Um, those of you that know Hannah, you know that she's soft-spoken and she's not a person of many words. And uh, so when she, but when she does say something, it, it is something. And uh, it made me think about Samuel. Uh, when God called Samuel, the Bible said um, he did not know the Lord and neither was the word of the Lord revealed unto him. It's kind of different from Hannah because Hannah knows the Lord and she's been filled with the Holy Ghost for several years now. And y'all know the story. God eventually gave uh, Samuel a word to give to Eli, and Samuel was afraid. If you go back and read that story, he was afraid and he was fretful. As with Hannah, when she, when God dealt with her about this, she was afraid as well because she felt, who am I to speak to people in her youth? But how many know God told Samuel that everybody around was going to know that he was established to be a prophet as it is for her to be a prophetess. And the Bible said he grew, praise God. So we beginning that this is the beginning uh, of her growth uh, on another realm and another level in God. So, uh, Miss Hannah, you come forth and uh, talk to the people about what God showed you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, Sunday evening, I, we had service that day, and once I got home, I laid down to take a nap, and God gave me a dream. And in that dream, I was in a church setting, and there were 
in a in a church that were it was filled with backsliders and it was filled with saints and in a dream an individual was purging and they was getting prayed for and whatever came out of them it splattered upon the wall and the people was astonished in a dream everyone was didn't know what it was, but they was surprised at it. But they sent me to clean it up. So as I went upon to the wall, as I was approaching the wall to clean it, I saw handwriting within the vomit. And in the handwriting, it said Belshazzar. A name was spelled in the vomit. It said Belshazzar. And underneath the name was the number seven. So. I, be, I believe God, I mean, in the in the dream, I was saying, no one else understood it, but I did. So I began to interpret it. And as I was saying, there's, in the dream, I began saying that it's a story in the Bible similar to this. And whatever was the outcome of that story in the Bible, that was what God was, wanted to, was saying to the people within the church. So... And when I woke up, I began looking deeper into it. And there's a chapter in Daniel that says it all, really. Daniel chapter 5, the first name that's... The first word of the chapter is the name Belshazzar. And it says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine command to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the kingdom out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king his princes his wives his concubines might drink therein then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes his wives and his concubines drank in them they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Jesus. And I went, I got from verse 3 that the people in the kingdom, they took the golden vessels that was in the house of God. Come on. And they used it for a carnal thing. Lord. They took something sanctified and made it for their own pleasure. Jesus. And as it went down in verse 5, it said, And the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick, against the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Mm. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose. And mm. his knees smoke one against the other. And that, it's really just the way how it was in my dream. Fingers, it looked like that the word Belshazzar was spelled with a man's hand. And and that's just, it's, it's just like Jesus. the dream. Woo. And after that, basically after that, uh, after verse 5, mm -hmm. going down into the chapter a king Belshazzar was looking for someone to interpret the dream for him. So he you he sent, you know, the man of the kingdom, the astrologers. Yeah. And uh, you know, the soothsayers, the Chaldeans to try to interpret a dream, but no one could. That's so right. So King the Queen considered Daniel to mm -hmm. interpret a dream because everyone known Daniel to be a man of God. Come on. And verse 17 says then Daniel answered and said before the king let thou gifts be to thyself and give thou give thou rewards to another yet I will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation Jesus O thou king the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar the father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before God, mm -hmm. before him, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. whom he would, 
whom he would he slew right. and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was de deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him Jesus that right there <laughs> verse 20 was the same de deal with Belshazzar mm -hmm. his pride that's what God was wanted to deal with him was with his pride pride and verse 21 says and Nebuchadnezzar he and he was driven from the sons of man and his heart was made like the beast and his dwellings was with the wild donkey mm -hmm. they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of man and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will yes and thou his son Belshazzar has not humbled thine heart though thou knewest all this whoa but has lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thou lords, thou wives, thou concubines have drank wine in them. And thou hast praised the god the gods of silver and gold of brass, iron, wood and stone, which not we see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thou breath is, and whose are all the ways hast thou not glorified. Whew. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many tekel ufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thou, thou kingdom and finished it. Mm -hmm. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Paris, the kingdom is divided. And give it to the Medes and the per and the Persian. Come on. Twenty nine says, Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And thirty says, And that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old and i think that th this chapter alone is so powerful because i i didn't know i didn't know when i dreamed that belshazzar was the king that that the story in the bible was talking about i thought it was darius mm -hmm. just to see that ironically that this is the same king as the writing in the wall in my dream Belshazzar, the same king in the Bible, God was dealing with what God sent a message to mm -hmm. warn him, but when he sent that message, it was already too late. For Jesus, Belshazzar. Jesus. That same night, Belshazzar was slain and his kingdom was taken over because of his pride. Verse 27, as in March the 27th, I had this dream Sunday. Mm -hmm. Verse 27 says, Thou art weighed in the balances and art found Jesus. wanting. And I believe God is saying that He wants more. We are, His people mm -hmm. is found wanting. God wants us to come higher. That's what God is saying. That's a powerful message that everyone should take heed. People that are in Christ, saints, and also people that have left the church, those that are backslid those that have forgotten the ways that they came from. God is saying that thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Lord, Lord Jesus, my God, my God, my God. That's so powerful. And for those of you that are just chiming in, I'll just give a brief recap that on, and I, I don't know if you noticed that she said, she had the dream on March the 27th. The number seven was written on under the word in her dream. And the interpretation that God was speaking to the body of Christ was found in verse 27. The dream was on March 27th. The interpretation in the book 
was on coming from the 27th verse. So for those just coming in, she had a dream. And in the dream, it was a church setting. There were saints and there were backsliders. And one individual in the dream was receiving prayer and they began to purge. And as they began to purge, what came out of them splattered onto the wall. Well, Hannah, long story short, was going over to clean the splatter. And everybody was astonished because, as she said, it came out of the person in a dream and it went upon the wall. But when Hannah got to the wall, it wasn't just vomit, right? It was something much deeper. It was deeper. There was a handwriting on the wall. Hey! Nobody else could see it. And keep in mind with the, the context of the, the, when you go to the actual story, there was a handwriting on the wall. And he could not interpret it. And he sent far and near to get an interpretation. So go back to her dream. She understood. She saw the handwriting in the wall. And this was written inside of vomit. Now imagine this. We all know vomit there's nothing pleasant about vomit. We all know this. Anybody, the most strongest person, vomit is gross. So this can't be any God is definitely communicating something that is gross, detestable to him, which is the spirit of pride. So the word, what was the word written in the vomit? Belshazzar. Belshazzar. Not just a word, but a name. Belshazzar was written in the vomit with a finger on the wall. And she interpreted and began to interpret it on the wall. And in her dream, she began to explain that there is a story in the Bible. And she referenced Daniel and, and that the interpretation and the end result of the story in the Bible is what God wanted to communicate to his people. And so am I, am I telling it so far as <laughs> she stated? And so as she uh, got up from the dream, of course, and go seek and search. And then you get to the chapter. If you read your Bible in Daniel, the very first word in the chapter is Belshazzar. Chapter five, Daniel. Chapter five. Belshazzar, the first word. And that was the word that was written on the wall in her dream. And as you go down the story, she, she brought out so uh, beautifully verse three, where... They took the vessels, they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple and out of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wife, all of these people were using the vessels of the house of the Lord. And you said, it's so beautiful, you said, how was that? Did you worry about it? It was something that was sanctified. Yes, they, they took the sanctified, the sanctified vessels of God and used it for their own pleasure. For their own pleasure. Okay, and so then this wall began to start appearing. This is in Daniel on the wall, and this thing shocked him. <laughs> what were you gonna say? No, it's, it's the handwriting, <laughs> yes, the handwriting. And this thing shocked Belshazzar so bad to it say his knees buckle, his knees buckle. And then, long story short, he sent for this one, sent for that one, and nobody that he sent was able to interpret. And give what God had to say as with now. Everybody want a soft word. Everybody wants something that's ple pleasing to the flesh. But how many know you got to go get somebody that's anointed and really got a clean vessel and hearing from God. You can't get no cleaner than this. A, 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 a soon to be 17 year old uh, young lady who's been filled with the Holy Ghost. What, what age? Eight years old. And God is coming to tell us that his, our pride is making him sick. His, his, he's tired of the pride in the body of Christ. And so they sent for Daniel and Daniel came forth. Now the king offered Daniel gifts. Man, you tell me what this say. I'm, I'm going to reward you. And then Daniel came in. He said, before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. See, some of these preachers, they say, baby, keep your gifts to yourself. You're not going to muzzle my mouth with gifts. You're not going to dumb me down with gifts. They said, keep your gifts to yourself. But I'll tell you what God is saying. 
And that's what he did. Hey, and he said, keep your gifts to yourself and give our rewards to another. Give that to somebody who don't have no fret and somebody that don't fear God, somebody that's not trying to please God. Give your gifts to them. And he said, and I will read the writing unto the king. And Daniel began to let this king know. Now, something that's so powerful, Hannah, about this story is never, uh, Belshazzar is King Nebuchadnezzar's son. And if you go back just one chapter before, Daniel again had to be sought out because Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He didn't understand it. And they tried to get somebody to interpret it. And Daniel had to be called for that situation. And when Daniel got there, it said Daniel, whose name was uh, was Belshazzar, was a stun for one hour. He was... <laughs> He was in a trance for one hour, it says, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. And it says, he answered and said, my Lord, the dream be to them that hate thee and the interpretation thereof. So Daniel began to interpret his dream to Nebuchadnezzar and tell him that God was fixing to bring him down. His heart was lifted up and he was in pride and he was going to let him know that his heart was fixing to change from the heart of a man and become the heart of a beast. And y'all know the story. Daniel was, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was brought down. And the Bible says he was brought down until he recognized the true and the living God. And in the body today, we are got ourselves so lifted up and we are so lifted up in pride. And God is coming as he did in the days of Daniel. And he's saying, hey, you got to come down. It ain't enough room for God and us to be up here. Somebody got to come down. Somebody need to humble themselves. The Bible say humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You want to humble yourself because, see, you don't want God to humble you the way he did Nebuchadnezzar. And this is why I feel, Hannah, you said something so beautiful. You said that that was the end. At the time that, that Belshazzar got the interpretation, that was it for him. It was too late. You know why? Because he saw what happened to his father. He saw what happened to his father. And Dan said, God said, you knew all of this. You knew. You saw how I brought him down. You saw how he had claws. His nails grew out to claws. My God, like a beast. You knew this. And you knew this, but you didn't change. God is calling somebody to change. It's time to change. You're trying to learn from those who have fallen away. We're talking about the great falling away. It's time to learn Look who look at look and see the, that people have fallen away. Strong people, people that once was was rooted and grounded in Christ, people that once stood for something, they're starting to take down. They began to take down in the body of Christ, and we need to learn from these things and humble ourselves. And the story goes on, and that was the end for him that night. There was no more room. There was no more space for repentance for him. His father was able to repent and and it turned out well but the son came around that's just like my children now i'm raising these children in holiness i'm raising them and teaching them the right stuff hey and then you come behind me you know better Delva, you know better bear zachary hannah all of my babies mary temperance nathan the twins you know better because you had an ex what an example before you so your judgment is going to be a little bit harsher than mine because i didn't know i didn't know but those of us that know god is calling us he is calling us to change and he want to change that won't go back don't change on your change do that make sense to you don't change on your change. And so go back, share this video with somebody in the body of Christ and show them the, the this so powerful, the dream that she had about the writing on the wall. And she wake up and then go to find, whoa, that's a story with the writing on the wall. And you trace it out, follow it down. It was the spirit of pride. Say, God, hallelujah take out everything that's in me that's not like you god purge me from the spirit of pride 
Hey, my seed. The Bible says if you will humble yourself, you will be exalted. But if you exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. Anything else came out? Or you, you had a verse, Hannah, that you uh, that God gave you. interpretation the the verses that she came from came from daniel chapter 5 read that whole chapter and then she went to joel chapter 31 and verse 6 and then go back to daniel chapter 4 and see the whole story how nebuchadnezzar what you know god brought him down somebody's about to be brought down if you don't humble yourself Somebody is about to be brought down. The Bible says pride brings a man low. What's that scripture you quoted, Hannah? You said pride goes up. Pride, pride, pride goes before destruction. Mm -hmm. I mean, and a healthy spirit before fall. That's right. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. So y'all be encouraged today. We do thank God for you. We thank God for everybody that chimed in. Share this video. If you feel like God uh, touched you in this video, share this live. And y'all be encouraged tonight. Be safe. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank God. We want to recognize our pastor, Pastor Barry Jones Sr. We want to give him honor today and let him know that we love him and we appreciate him. And we thank God for everybody that tuned in today. Y'all have a blessed day.